In today's video, we're going to create this stylized particle text animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Let's go. Once you're in Fusion, bring in a text node and a merge node. Connect the text to the merge and the merge to the media app. Next, select the text node. Let's type in our word and change the size to 0.1. I'm also going to change the font. It's not necessary, but it's a personal preference. Next, let's change our text into particles. Let's bring in a particle emitter, which is responsible for generating the particles. And we're going to go to region and change it from sphere to bitmap so we can connect our text to the emitter. Next, we're going to bring in a particle render. Without this, DaVinci will have no idea what to do with your particles and you won't be able to see them anyway. So connect the emitter to the renderer and the renderer to the merge. And one last thing, we need a particle turbulence, shift spacebar, P turbulence. The turbulence is responsible for the movement and the intensity of the movement of the particles. Basically, it will simulate wind blowing your particles away in what direction you want. Now, let's start setting our particles and animate them. First, select the P emitter and still in the region tab, go to frame zero, change the low value to 0.52. Even though it's a slight change, it counts and the high value to 0.808 and set a keyframe. Next, jump to frame 20 and change only the high value to one. Now we go to the controls tab, change the number of particles from 10 to 5,000 so we can see something, the number of variants to four and the lifespan at frame 20 to 21. And we're gonna set a keyframe at frame 24 lifespan. Next, let's move to frame nine and change the value of lifespan to 300. Then jump to frame zero and set the lifespan to zero. Next, move to frame 79, set a keyframe for number, then jump to frame 93 and change from 5000 to zero. And as you can see, every time we make a change, the P render renders your particles. So if you change something and it's not showing up, just remember you have to wait for the render to render your particles. Now let's quickly play this back. Good. Next, we're going to set up the turbulence and we're going to animate it. Select the P turbulence. First, we're going to go to conditions. We're going to place our playhead at frame zero and we're going to set the probability to zero and set a keyframe. Then we're going to jump to frame seven, change the value back to one, jump at frame 77, set a keyframe for value one, and then go to frame 97 and change the value of probability back to zero. Next, we're going to go to the controls tab jump back to frame zero, set a keyframe for X and Y and density at the current values and set the Z strength to zero. Next, we're gonna move at frame 15, set X and Y to zero and the density to 100. Then jump to frame 77 and only change X and Y to 0.193 for X and 0.16 for Y. Then we're gonna jump at frame 83, change the density 18.2 jump at frame 90 set x and y to zero then go to frame 94 and set the values for x and y back to 0.193 for x and for y 0.16 good let's play this back perfect but there's one thing we need to fix at the end of the animation the text still lingers fix that, we're going to add a rectangle mask to the text. We're going to set the soft edges to 0.1 and we're going to set a keyframe at frame 75 for width at value 0 0.625 and height at 0 0.35. Set the keyframes. Then we're going to go to frame 79, change width to 0.203 and height to 0 0.112. Then we're going to jump at frame 85 and set both of them to zero. Now we're going to do the transition from particles to solid text. To do that, we're going to create a instance of a node. We're going to select the text node, control C, double click on the empty space and control shift V to create a instance of the node. Next, we're going to bring in a dissolve. So double click on the empty space, shift spacebar and search for dissolve. And we're going to connect the renderer to the background of the dissolve and the instance to the foreground. Let's tidy up a bit. 
Now that we have everything connected, one last thing regarding tidying up your nodes, press and hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the connection line to create a pipe router. This will help you have cleaner lines in your node space. Now let's create that transition from particles to solid text. I want that transition to start at frame 28, select the dissolve node, change the value of background foreground to zero and set a keyframe. Next, I'm going to jump 10 frames ahead to frame 38 and change the value back to one. Move to frame 60, set a keyframe for value one and then move to frame 70 and change the value to zero. Here, I want the transition from solid back to particles. Now let's play this back. Perfect. Now let's add some color. Bring in a background node, change the connection of the dissolve node from background input to foreground input. Next, connect the background node to the background input of the merge node. With our background selected, change the type from solid color to four corners. Select top left. Let's add a dark blue. Copy the color, go to bottom right, paste the color, and there we have it. Now let's color our text, select the source, go to shading, change from solid to gradient, change black to a bright blue purple tone, bring in the left arrow just a little bit, then select the right arrow, change white to a teal aqua color, and let's bring the right arrow just a little bit in to create a smooth gradient between the two. Now let's play this back. And as you can see, the particle text didn't change, only the instance of the text changed. Well, to fix that, select the emitter, go to the controls tab and under color, change from use style color to use color from region. And now we have both texts colored. But if you're wondering why only the instance of the text node was colored when we were working in the source, well, that's because an instance of a node is basically a fancier and more controlled copy paste of a node. The green boxes around each value indicates us that there is a link between the source and the instance. So if I change something in the instance, it will be reflected in the source and vice versa. That's the power of an instance node and the benefit when working with complex animations and multiple nodes of the same type. Now let's play this back one more time. And that is how you create a stylized particle text animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now, if you want to learn other cool text animation techniques, start with this one. And until next time, take care. <laughs>